A warm welcome to you all in the blessed name of our Savior Jesus Christ. It's indeed a joy to worship with you this morning. Let us begin our worship service. Before that, let us quiet on our hearts. Let us pause for a moment in silence and prepare our hearts to worship the living God. Psalm 68:32. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. To him who rides upon the highest heavens, which are from the ancient times. Behold, he speaks forth with his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe strength to God. His majesty is over Israel and his strength is in the skies. O God, you are awesome from your sanctuary. The God of Israel himself gives strength and power to the people. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you for who you are. Yes, Lord, you are the one who is in heaven. All the kingdoms of the earth belongs to you. You are the one who speaks and responds. You are the one who heals. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. In you there is life. In you there is truth. Only in you there is a way for a human soul to be saved. Blessed be your holy name. You are the one who gives strength to your people. We have come to your throne of grace this morning, O Lord. Let your grace be abundantly upon us. Speak to us. Minister to us. Convict us. Let the hymns that we are going to sing, that time that we are going to spend in your presence, the praises that we are going to sing, the offering that we are going to offer, the word that we are going to meditate, let everything be a worship to you. In Jesus' most blessed name we pray. Amen. Let us rise and sing hymnal one, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Let us sing this hymn joyfully with all of our hearts and minds. Oh 
shall all join in the responsive reading which is taken from the book of Psalms number 57 verses 1 to last entitled as let your glory be over all the earth we shall read responsively be merciful to me O God be merciful to me for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid friendly beasts. The children of man who see it as spears and arrows whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my glory. Awake, O heart and life. I will, I, will the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is greater to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. We shall all read together. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Dear people of God, it's a time for us to open up our hearts and minds. Let us sing praises to Him. Let us worship Him with all that we are. God has given us the freedom to worship in our own homes. Let us use it so that we can glorify our God Almighty. After the praise and singing, I request our senior pastor to lead us in the pastoral prayer.
for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. With love and strength for each new day. a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy Let us pray. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, our Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, we bow before your throne of grace with humble adoration, praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed privilege and opportunity which are given to each one of us to join this online digital worship service this morning thank you lord for grace and blessings which are showered upon each one of us O oh master thank you lord for being with us throughout the past week in a wonderful way you led each one through the power of the holy spirit thus far we continue to trust and depend upon you you are our refuge and fortress and ever present help in trouble O oh master we praise you, we worship you, we love you and adore at your presence. Without you, we are nothing, O Master. With you, we are more than conquerors, O Master. 
We thank you. We praise you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your ever abiding presence with each one of us, O oh Master. Lord, we need your grace to move forward with boldness, courage, and strength to magnify your most holy name, O oh Master. We thank you, we praise you. Revive and refresh us through the power of the Holy Spirit to grow more stronger and stronger in you, growing in your love and spiritual strength to lift your name on high in and through our lives, O Master. Lord, we thank you and praise you, Master, for the healing and deliverance which are given to many of our dear ones in the past week, O Lord. We join with them to give thanks unto you, Lord, continue to cover them with your precious blood. We put an edge around them with the fire of the Holy Spirit, O Master. We thank you, we praise you. Lord, at this time, we continue to uphold all those who are sick, O Lord. Let them be healed in Jesus' name. Let your nail pierce down, continue to touch them. Let your healing virtue flow through their body and reviving and refreshing them through the power of the Holy Spirit to our complete joy of healing and deliverance in their lives, O Master. We thank you and praise you, Master, for your providential care upon us. You provided our needs from your bountiful supply beyond our imagination and expectation. Continue to strengthen us. We continue to look on to you for every help and strength, O Master. You are our provider, O Lord Jesus. We thank you, we praise you. Lord, at this time, we humbly submit and surrender ourselves into your care and confessing our sins. And Lord, weaknesses, O Master, in many ways we have failed to keep up your commandments, knowingly or unknowingly, sinned against your will and majesty and against our fellow brothers and sisters, O Master. For that we seek your forgiveness and pardon with repentance, O Master. We thank you, we praise you. Cleanse and sanctify each area of our lives. Make us worthy to continue as your humble children, glorifying your most holy name, calling you above, Father, for everything, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you, we praise you. Lord, at this time, we humbly submit and surrender ourselves as a church family this morning. And all those who have joined this virtual worship service this morning into your care, O oh Master. Lord, continue to direct us, strengthen us, and you lead us and guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Always to walk with you and have communion and fellowship with you. And with each other magnifying your most holy name, O Master. We thank you, we praise you. Bless all our dear children in a special way, O Master. Lord, continue to nurture each one through the power of the Holy Spirit to in every way with your living word and with your fear so that they can receive the wisdom from above in an abundant way, O Master. Shape each child according to your will and wish for your glory, O Master. Lord bless all our young people. Continue to cover them with your precious blood. You enable and empower them to acknowledge your Lordship over their lives, O Master. Even give them grace to Reach the goal which you have set before them, O Master. In an amazing way, enable and empower them to stay and see that you are so good in their lives, O Lord Jesus. Bless all our dear senior citizens and men and women of our church. Continue to cover each one with your precious blood, O Master. Lord, each one needs your healing touch and refreshing presence of your living presence and also the power of the Holy Spirit to empower us to lead a blessed and acceptable and pleasing life in your presence, O Master. You direct each one of our steps, O Master. O Lord, you lead us and guide us, O Lord Jesus. Bless the life and ministry of our church and different activities and ministries of our church, O Master. Lord, through everything, let your name be exalted and glorified, O Lord Jesus. Even as our dear children join the online Sunday school classes, O Master, even give them grace to concentrate and learn and grow in your love and fellowship through your word, O Master. Bless all dear teachers and parents in a special way, O Master. We thank you, we praise you. 
Lord, at this time, we commit each and every member, each and every family of our Korabangla Methodist Church, O Master. Put an edge around each one with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Lord, reviving and refresh them through the power of the Holy Spirit to be united in you and also filled with your sacrificial love to magnify your most holy name, spreading the fragrance of your witnessing love through our lives, O Master. We thank you, we praise you, Lord. Lord, at this time, we commit ourselves to the pastoral team of KMC family, O Master. Lord, anoint us with the power of the Holy Spirit to lead this congregation to the greater heights for your glory, guided by the power of the Holy Spirit, O Master. We especially pray for Pastor Daniel Ezra Navin and his family, Pastor Martin and family, Pastor Alfred Sudarshan and family. Continue to bless them and use them as your mighty vessels for your glory, O Master. Lord, at this time, we also pray for the, our extension church family, the Sarjapur Road Methodist Church. Continue to bless them as they continue to look on to you for having their own worship place, O Master. In your provision, by your grace, provide the required place to build the sanctuary at your way. But by your grace and mercy, O Master, and provisions from above, O Lord Jesus. Bless each and every one who worships at SRMC, O Master. Bless them as families, O Lord Jesus. We thank you, we praise you. Once again, we commit every aspect of each one of our lives into your care. Lord, at this time, we also commit ourselves along with the community of believers, the universal church, O Master. Lord, your people are coming together across the globe, O Master, in various ways through online and physical worship services, O Master. Anoint each one to grow more stronger and stronger in you. Prepare ourselves for your second coming and make us worthy to stand before your judgment throne, glorifying your most holy name in and through our lives, O Master. Lord, we thank you and praise you, Master, for the life and ministry of the Methodist Church in India, all our Episcopal leaders. We especially pray for our Bishop and Amma. Continue to bless them and use them as your mighty instruments, as per your will and wish for your glory, for the expansion of your kingdom, O Master. We also pray for our district sovereign and his family and the ministry in our district, O Master. Continue to cover them with your precious blood. You direct them, O Master. We commit all the district superintendent, pastors, evangelists, missionaries, deaconesses who are involved in the ministry of the church, in different capacities, in different places, O Master. Anoint each one through the power of the Holy Spirit in a fresh way and enable and empower us to rededicate ourselves and continue the blessed ministry which you have given to each one of us to spread the fragrance of your love, O man, and also proclaiming your gospel, O Master. We thank you, we praise you. Lord, even at this time, we commit ourselves along with our, our nation, all the citizens we commit unto you, O Master. Bless our land, heal our land, O Master. Remove every unrest, curse from our land, O Lord Jesus. We ask the pandemic is spreading, in a fast way, O oh Master, we plead at your presence to intervene and rebuke this plague and pestilence. We removed from the face of the earth. Let the power of the Holy Spirit descend upon each one, O oh Master, so that, Lord, everyone will be revived to have good health and strength to resist this sickness and overcome this sickness with by faith and strength from above, O Master. We also pray for all those who are sick through this pandemic, O Lord, wherever they are. Let them be healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Bless the medical community. Bless all those who are helping and providing the essential services, O Lord. When police personnel, O Master, you be with them and protect them from all sorts of infections, O Lord Jesus. We thank you, we praise you as the Lord and the medical fraternity and the scientists are, Lord, preparing and struggling to, Lord, finalize the invention of the vaccine, O oh Master. You give them grace to complete it by the wisdom from above 
and use it for the protection and healing of the humanity, O oh Master. We thank you, we praise you. Once again, we commit each aspect of this process into your care through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let everything happen for your glory, O oh Master. We thank you and praise you. We also pray for the marginalized sections of the society, poor and needy, O oh Master. They need your grace. They need your strength and also your providential care upon them to lead a blessed lives, O oh Master. Provide all their basic necessities, O oh Master. We thank you. We praise you. Bless all those who are in authority. Bless our president, the prime minister and his cabinet, the chief minister of this state and his cabinet and local authorities. Cover them with your precious blood, O oh Master. You direct each one to Lord, lead this country and state in your way and let the peace, justice and equality flow through their administration to the common people, O Master. We thank you, we praise you. Lord, once again we commit ourselves into your care. As we reflect upon your word this morning, Lord, as we meditate upon your word, you speak to us at the point of our needs through your servant, O Master. Bless Pastor Naveen in a special way. Anoint him with the power of the Holy Spirit. And give us grace to listen to your voice. And also magnifying your most holy name. In following your footsteps and practicing your word in our life situation. So Master, once again we commit ourselves and the rest of the service into your care. Thank you Master for having heard our prayer. We give you all glory, honor, praise unto your name. Jesus precious name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear people of God, it's a joy and honor to be sharing the word with you this morning. And this is a second Sunday as I shared the word last week. I again got this opportunity to share the word with you this morning. And I praise God for this blessed opportunity. And I also thank our senior pastor for giving me this opportunity to share the word with you. As I was browsing the other day, I came across Don Trotman's biography. Dawson Trotman was the founder of Navigators. He had been a blessing to many, many people in many nations in his lifetime. Many of the Navigators came even to India as missionaries. And they have been a blessing to many people in the past, even when I was growing up as a young man. Some of those people came in search of raising disciples in small towns and villages. And they have really accomplished the mission that God has given them in their hearts. And the ministry of navigators had been a blessing in the world. Dawson Trotman is the man behind this ministry. Their main vision is to raise up disciples for Jesus Christ. They were intentional in nourishing those disciples to become strong Christians so that they in turn become the leaders for their own flocks. Dawson was a strong Christian, a strong witness. John Ridgway is one of his successors. He writes about him. He says, Dawson loved the word of God. Dawson was a man of vision. Dawson was a man of prayer. Dawson was a man of discipline. Dawson was a man of complete dedication. He had a single-minded vision. 
he did not involve in 40 other things but he had the right focus and to that focus he dedicated himself he was a man of dedication he was also a man of consuming love for the lost he was a man of soft rebuke a man who lived for eternity even while living on earth he was a perfect mature man and he was one of the Christians that his successor boastfully stayed and many of those people witnessed it and one among them was Billy Graham Billy Graham spoke in his funeral and he said quoting Psalm 37 37 he said mark the perfect mature man and observe the upright for the future of that man is peace and of Dawson Times magazine said in its reporting on his death Dawson Trotman was always holding somebody up Dawson Trotman was always holding somebody up. What a blessed witness it is. Last week, we were discussing about disciple being a witness. And who can be a witness like this? A man who lived in our own century, the man who has impacted people around the world. I also was reading a book written by one of my favorite authors, A.W. Tozer, the book is The Root of Righteous. In that particular book, we can find a description of a Christian by A.W. Tozer. Who is a Christian? He describes that particular word in these beautiful verses. He says, Christian is the one who feels the supreme love for the one whom he has never seen. Christian is the one who talks familiarity every day to someone he cannot see. He expects to go to heaven on the virtue of the another. He empties himself in order to be full. Admits he is wrong so he can be declared right goes down in order to get up is stronger when he is weakest richest when he is poorest happiest when he feels worst he dies so he can live forsakes in order to have these are some of the words which A.W. Tozer uses to describe who the Christian is. He says he is a person wholeheartedly love the unseen God. He is very much familiar with the one who is unseen in his life. He believes that the virtue of the other person would lead him to heaven. He empties himself so that he can show his fullness, his honesty to reveal the truth. He is willing to go low because he knows he will get up. He feels strong when he feels weak. He knows becoming rich through poverty. He is happy when he is in pain. He dies to leave. He doesn't worry to disown what he has. He knows he already have that. For him, giving away is having it. Belief in the invisible without hearing he knows the root of knowledge without hearing he knows who is the one who can give the wisdom in the world to live what an amazing description of a Christian is this is this the image in each one of us is this the image in each one of us which is necessary for us to move on yes it is absolutely necessary and we need to strive to develop in our image, the image of Christ day after day, as long as we live on this earthly journey. This morning's topic is a question. A question 
which is for you and for me. If I ask you, would you love to be a Christian? Would you love to become like Christ? What is your answer for that? Yes, if we claim to be Christian, we must be like Christ. Would you love to become like Christ? My dear people of God, this is the answer we are going to find out this morning. The answer for this question is yes. If you are sitting this morning in this worship service, your answer will be yes and it must be yes because there is no other option apart from saying yes. If you are not answering as yes, then there is no point in being on this online platform worshiping or living God. Yes is the answer. Yes, I want to become like Christ is the answer that we need to accept it. No matter what the challenges are, we need to come to that conclusion of accepting the answer as yes. Yes, I need to be like Christ. This morning, the scripture portion is from three different texts. Two from, three from three epistles. Romans chapter 8, 29, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, 1 John 3, 2. Maybe if you have the Bibles with you, please turn your Bibles and if you have a paper or a notebook or a pen, I would urge you to keep it aside because the answer that we, we have to give for the question is yes. And if you don't know the answer in detail, it is our duty to note down the answer and meditate upon it and as soon as possible absorb it so that you can live with the truth. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Romans chapter 8 and 28 is one of the famous verses for all of us. But Romans chapter 8 29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 says, But we all, seeing the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces, as in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. 1 John 3, 2 Beloved, now are we children of God and it is not, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when, it, when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Since there is no one particular verse which will give us all the knowledge of becoming like Christ, it is advisable for us to see this different text in different contexts to understand the heart of God and the mind of God for our lives. It is very crucial for us to know that God did not emphasize or command us to be like him, but whenever he revealed something, he made it a point to reveal his heart and mind so that while reading the word, we may absorb what is there in his heart for us. Discipleship is a lifestyle which each one of us should accept it and live it in our lives. As the letter to Romans was written, God revealed that to the writer. We all think that it is Paul. Yes, it may be Paul, but he has revealed that in this letter. And the second letter of Paul to Corinthian church, yes, it was revealed to Paul. And the other verse that we read is from John's first epistle. And in that, he reveals his heart and mind to the one who loved him the most among the 12 disciples. My dear people of God, we shall see these three texts first so that we can come to a point in understanding what exactly is God wanting us to be. 
what he is exactly wanting the church to be, what he wants his disciple to be. Many of us do not know why we are Christians, why we need to follow what we are following. We do not know the strategy of God for our own lives. Disciples had the same problem. But when the Holy Spirit came upon them in the book of Acts, so many things was revealed to them and through their lives they kept these secrets written down in the epistles and they have passed on from generation to generation. It is very much necessary for each one of us to know that there is no other option for a Christian if we claim to be a Christian that we must live like Christ or else we are not in the fold of God. To that extent, the writers have revealed the secret of God's heart in their writings. We need to read Romans chapter 8 verse 29 in the light of verse 28. We need to read this verse starting from verse 28 because in that verse 28 the word good is revealed and here that good is been explained in verse 29. The good is to make each one of those readers to be like Christ. Meaning, for those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Jesus in this verse is an elder brother of all those who are living, who have lived and who will live in the future. So the good thing that God is doing in our lives and in the past history of the church or in the future of the church, the good, things, the good thing that he is doing is to make each one of those disciples to be like Christ. You will be more like Jesus himself. There is no greater good that Almighty can do for us than to keep on transforming us day by day like his son. Good, the word good in this particular context means being like Christ, enjoying a close fellowship with God like Christ, bearing good fruits for the kingdom of God and final glorification that is been revealed in verse 30 and it does not mean any earthly pleasures. Many of the preachers speak about this verses, this passage, referring to the earthly pleasures or the blessings. But here in this particular context in Romans chapter 8, it is all about God predestining his disciples to confirm them or make them like his son. This was his eternal purpose. This was the plan even before the universe was created. God has always been doing good for his people. He has done good to you. He has done good to me. Can any one of us say that God has not done good to me this morning? God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. We all are recipients of his amazing love for us. Do you love him this morning? If yes, then know it for sure that he has decided from the outset to shape your life and mine of those who love him along the same line as the life of his son, Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 11 verse 2 part A speaks that God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. So here, Phonew, the word phonew in verse 29 is a contrast with the rejected. Meaning, he knew his people, he knew his disciples, he knew who loves him. If I ask you a question this morning, do you love him? Do you say that you hate him? No. You will always tell, because we love him, we are here on this online platform to worship him to sing his praises, to worship and adore him. My dear people of God, this was predestined. It was 
strategically planned by God even before creating this whole universe. When we see the story of Adam, he lost almost all the things which he was created with as he was designed by the God Almighty. Genesis 1, 26, 1, uh, 1, 26 and 27 reveals that it has been his plan for us to be created in his own image and he created the human beings in his own image. Adam lost all that divine image in his life when he subscribed himself to sin. However, God did not leave him in that condition. Rather, he started to restore Adam of what he has lost. He started restoring it in Christ. Conformity to the image of God means to be like Jesus. And Christ-likeness is the eternal, predestining, preordained purpose of God, my dear people of God. So, if you would be asked would you love to become like Christ if you say yes you should know that God is in the process God was in the process of predestining you even before you have come into this world so you and I are part of his grand eternal mission it was planned not now after we accepted Christ it was not planned after the KMC came to existence. It was not when I received the salvation. He foreknew us even before the creation of the world. I and you should know that it is the eternal purpose of God which was long back planned by the grace of God. We shall come to the second writing of the scripture in 2 Corinthians 3.18. But we shall be all seeing the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces as in the mirror are being transformed in the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. Now the perspective has changed from past to the present. He has changed from God's eternal predestination to his present transformation of us by the Holy Spirit from God's eternal purpose to make us like Christ to his historical work by the Spirit to transform us into the image of Christ. As I said, the transformation is happening now. It is happening in your life now. It has happened yesterday. It has happened day before yesterday. It has happened when you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in the process. Do you know that? That is what is revealed in this particular verse. As a result of seeing the Lord through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the believer is being transformed over time into the same image of God that was distorted by Adam when he fell into sin. That's why Paul in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. My dear people of God, many of us do not know this. That there is a process going on without our knowledge, without our willingness, without our, our conscious being in the question. We are leading as disciples, a life led as disciples. We are living like disciples and this is what we need to know. What God planned long back is currently happening in my life and yours. The image, the word image of God includes every way in which humans are like gods or like God. This includes their moral character, their knowledge, their many God-given abilities and their rule over creation. Again, Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27, 26 to 28. He had a purpose. He had a plan and purpose for the human beings to be created. He wanted them to be in his image. He wanted them to accomplish his purpose in being the stewards of looking after the creation. The ministry of the Holy Spirit not only frees us from the power of sin or dead to sin, but also from the love of money, from the traditions of our fathers and elders who were contrary to the word of God, 
from the opinions of other peoples and other faith peoples or other religious people my dear people of God you are part of the ministry I am part of that ministry we need to know that because we need to know that the mission of God is on in my life and yours yeah we can live our life without knowing that if we if we live without knowing that we may not cooperate with the mission of God but today the the, the message have come to us through the writings of Paul he says but we all seeing the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces as in the mirror as being transformed in the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord yes my dear people of God I and you need to be conscious about it we cannot just take it lightly it is not about the religion it is not about the rituals it is not about the tradition it is not about the denomination it is about growing in glory to glory to become like his son Jesus Christ the ministry of the Holy Spirit is upon us whether we like it or not if we know that we are following Jesus Christ the Spirit is upon us Holy Spirit's ministry in us is to show the glory of Jesus he is ministering to us many of us have not yielded our lives in knowing this truth the Spirit reveals to us how Jesus made sacrifices in order to serve his father he is revealing to us the life of Christ through the Gospels he is revealing us this truth of Jesus sacrifice and also the sacrifice of the apostles in the church history you know why we know that because they were sacrificing to serve their father and he is also urging us to make sacrifices to serve the Lord now in the present situation what is the sacrifice that you are making what are those sacrifices that we are making to serve the Lord Jesus Christ my dear people of God the truth has evaporated from the gospel the gospel has been twisted the gospel has been completely changed according to our conveniences it is all about prosperity it is all about health it is all about blessing have you listened any messages any one message which speaks about becoming like Christ my dear people of God we need to know the gospel in its fullness we need to know God in its fullness so that we may become like him and we may become like him only in verse 3 he says for you are prominently declared to be the letter of Christ my dear people of God Paul is writing to Corinthian church in the same chapter chapter 3 verse 3 he says for you were prominently declared to be the letter of Christ prepared by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God not on the tablets of stone but on the human tablets of the heart my dear people of God you are a letter of Christ I am a letter of Christ and that is that is the truth about us it is not about the religion it is about a person through whom we are becoming like him and the third verse that we are going to discuss is 1 John 3 2 beloved now are we children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is in this verse the perspective again is changing from the present to the future God, in, God is calling us to cooperate with him as he is on a mission in our lives he says follow me abide in me imitate me why why is he calling us to follow him he knows that the future is much more demanding than the present why he is he doing his mission upon our lives why is he allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us transform in mind as well as our hearts why is he doing that because he knows 
the future. And that is what has been revealed by John in this epistle. God is calling us to cooperate with him. He is on a mission on upon our lives. He is urging us to follow him, consciously follow him, not religiously, not through the rituals and tradition. He is calling us to follow him so that we can imitate all that he has done in his earthly life. We actually don't know in any detail what we shall be like, but the God who has saved us knows everything about the future, but we know that we will be like him as Christ is. My dear people of God, not much of the revelation of the future has been given, but only the concluding word or the phrase or the sentence is being explained here. He says, you will be like Christ, that's it. How like Christ? That is not been explained. We are being transformed now. We are called the children of God, but nobody knows how we will end up. What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed in the future, we will see him and in, in seeing him become like him. My dear people of God, this is what is the order that is being revealed to us. The order is from the past. It is in the present and it will end up in the future. That is the order that I and you need to understand. Would you love to become like Jesus? Yes, there is no option for us to say no. We need to become like Jesus. We are in the process of becoming like Jesus. We will be like him in the future, like Jesus. Predestination to the present transformation and future glory. What an amazing revelation it is to each one of us to just know what God is doing in our lives. My dear people of God, this is what is the strategy. This is what is the blueprint that has been laid out for a believer in Christ. We don't know this. The world around us doesn't know this. The world don't reveal this to us because it doesn't know the fact and the truth. Our academic excellence in whichever profession that we have belong to does not give us an iota of a clue in this regard. But the word of God is clear on this. The writings in the scripture is clear on this. It says God knows the first day of your life. He knows the last day of your life. And in between, we need to journey with God, walk with God, understand God, trust God, obey God and be with him as he has commanded us to be. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And the details have been spread out in the scriptures as we read the scriptures day in and day out. My dear people of God, it is very crucial for the church to know. It is very crucial for the individual to know. It is very crucial for us parents to know because if we don't know the blueprint, where are we leading our families to? If we don't know the blueprint as a church, where are we leading our church to? What is the purpose of being in this world? Yes, many have gone ahead of us. Many will be leaving us shortly. Many will stay on with us for a long time. What is the purpose of the church? What is the purpose of a believer? What is the purpose that God has revealed to us in his blueprint about the life of a disciple? He has predestined us. He is currently working with us. He will make us like his son, Jesus Christ. Past, present and future. In the eternal purpose, we have been predestined. In God's historical purpose, we are being changed, transformed by the Holy Spirit. And in God's final eschatological purpose, we will be like him. My dear people of God, if you are claiming to be a Christian, then you must be working on becoming like Christ. I must be working on becoming like Christ. Nowhere in the Bible we have an option. Nowhere in the Bible we have an option for one-fourth Christian, half Christian, three-fourth Christian or even 99% Christian. Either we live like Jesus to become like Christ or else we are leading our life in the dark to an unknown destination. 
My dear people of God, are you a blind Christian? Are you a Christian filled with light? These are the two aspects that we need to think about. Because Christian is always the one who is growing from glory to glory. Knowledge after knowledge, maturity after maturity. That we are not saying in the present church. That is not seen in the Christian family. That is not seen in the disciple's life. That is what God is calling us to see this morning. So with these three scriptures, we can establish that God has been planning even before the universe was created to make us like Christ. Currently, he's working in us to make us like Christ. He will make us like Christ in the future. When we see him, we will be like him. That is what is the plan that we understand with these three verses. Let us see how we can become like him in day-to-day -day life. How can we become like Christ in our daily lives? We can become like Christ in his incarnation. Many of us say, when we, word use, when we use the word incarnation, many may say, Pastor, incarnation was altogether a unique event and cannot be imitated by any one of us. The answer for this question is both yes and no. Yes, it is true that we cannot imitate Jesus, Jesus' incarnation in our lives. It is God who voluntarily took on humanity upon himself in Jesus of Nazareth and it is done once for all and never to be repeated by anybody in eternity. That is the truth. Yes, that is the truth we all know. We should not stop at that point. No, we can imitate him in his incarnation. How we can imitate him in, in his incarnation? We can imitate the incarnation because God is calling us to imitate the mind of Christ in the incarnation by accept, accepting the example of becoming humble in this world. While writing to Philippian church, Paul reveals this in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 8. He says, let this mind be in you all, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he emptied himself taking upon himself the form of a servant and made in the likeness of men and being found in the form of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. My dear people of God, this portion, I think we need to read it personally when we go back home. Maybe when you're reading your personal on your personal study. Yes, it is possible to be like him in his incarnation. Because in this verse, he urges the Philippian church, Paul urges the Philippian church, let this mind be in you all. Meaning, see the mind of Christ, copy that mind and put it in your mind. When the time came, Jesus set aside all his privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. And he became human being. It was incredibly humbling process in the life of God. He didn't claim for himself special privileges. Instead, he set aside all the privileges to become like a slave. He lived selfless life. He lived an obedient life and obedience even to the death. My dear people of God, incarnation is to become like a servant so that we can help others to see Jesus Christ. Unless we set aside the privileges, unless we imitate the mind of Christ in our lives, unless we see ourselves, the possibility of incarnation, we cannot do much for Jesus Christ. Because it demands us to focus on the mind of Christ and being found in the form of a man he humbled himself the second aspect that we can see is we can become like Christ in service John chapter 13 verse 14 and 15 
we move on from his incarnation to his life of service. Jesus during the Last Supper took off his outer garments, tied the towel around him, poured the water into the basin and washed his disciples' feet. When he had finished that, he instructed the disciples to do the same as he has done to him. Meaning some of us might take this literally of washing the other's feet. That is not what Jesus might have revealed to his disciples. Because in that culture, washing the feet is the lowest of the low work that a slave will do for his master. Jesus actually telling his disciple to go as much as possible down, humble yourself until you reach that stage where you don't degrading that task as the lowest work in the society. Meaning that God is telling them to come as low as possible to serve the people of all the status. You are not the master when you are a disciple, but you are a slave. In your work, you have to wash the feet of your disciples. Meaning that, that is the hallmark of a disciple. When you come to other works of Jesus, we can be like him in his love too. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2, he says, Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. To walk in love, to live a life of love, just as Christ means that all our behaviors should be characterized by love. But there is another phrase here. He says, gave himself for us is a clear reference to the cross. My dear people of God, until our love is consumed by the love of Calvary, it is not called as the love of Christ. Paul in the same letter urges Ephesian church, instructing the husbands to love their wives as Christ loved his church. My dear people of God, if you want to be like Jesus, it is a practice day in and day out. Yes, we can be like Jesus in our love. We can also be like Jesus in our endurance. He says in 1 Peter, actually Peter speaks of this more more emphatically than Paul. As he writes his first letter, it was persecution all around. And in that, he instructs the slaves to be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh masters. Peter urges Christian slave, if you are punished unjustly, bear it, not to repay evil with re evil. My dear people of God, we have been called to this because Christ has suffered on the cross, leaving us an example so that we may follow in his footsteps. 1 Peter 2, 21, for, this, for to this you were called, because Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. This calls us to become increasingly relevant in the times of persecution, in different forms in our culture today. My dear people of God, we can be like him in the incarnation, we can be like him in our service. We can be like him in our love. And we can also be like him in our endurance. If you are like him, there is also consequences. My dear people of God, consequences, when it comes to consequences, there is consequences even if you are not living your life to be like Jesus. There is also consequences when you live a life like Jesus, there is also consequences for that. Because while you live like Jesus, Cross, pain, suffering, all this is together with you. There is no Christendom without the cross. There is some gospels which has been proclaimed now. And in those gospels, cross is absent. But Christianity without cross is always a myth. My dear people of God, many sermons of the Christendom do speak of the absence of suffering in disciples' life. But that is absolutely a wrong interpretation of the word. There is no discipleship without the cross. Jesus says, carry your cross and follow me. Carrying our cross and following Jesus is the clear teaching by Jesus himself. So the presence of suffering as you desire 
To be like Christ is an evidence of the process of God's work in your life. Cross is present in your desire to be like Christ. And the second aspect or the second consequence is that the Holy Spirit is always there. You and I cannot become like Jesus. Adam was fallen and we have inherited that sinful nature in us. And that sinful nature will never give us power to be like Jesus. That is why the triune God gave the Holy Spirit to his disciples in the book of Acts. He urged the disciples to wait for the comforter to come. He urged the disciples to wait for the helper to come so that they might be strengthened and ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Desiring to be like Christ is one of the clearest desires a human being ever can have in himself. It is to be like registering to the grand event of Jesus receiving you in heaven. But is it possible to be accomplished by your own strength? No, I cannot accomplish it. You cannot accomplish it. We need to give space for the Holy Spirit to come in our life. It is our own, in our own strength we cannot accomplish this. But God has given us the Holy Spirit to enable us to fulfill this purpose in us. And this is what we need to understand, my dear people of God. I will conclude this with an illustration of William Temple. When he illustrated this fact of needing of Holy Spirit in our life. He says, It is no good giving me a play like Hamlet or King Lear and tell me to write a play like that. Shakespeare could do it. I can't. And it is no good showing me a life like the life of Jesus and telling me to live a life like that. Jesus could do it. I cannot. But if the genius of the Shakespeare could come and live in me, then I could write a play like it. And if the Holy Spirit of Jesus could come live in me, then I could live a life like his. My dear people of God, this is the point that I would like to leave with you. Unless we give space to the cross and the Holy Spirit, our dear desire to be like Christ will not be fulfilled. So let us continue to meditate upon these three verses that has been revealed to us. See what God has done in the past. See what God is doing in the current situation, in your life, in your family, in your church. What he wishes to do in the future for each one of us. May God continue to minister to us. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. Thanks for this blessed time of meditation. Continue to minister to us, Lord. We cannot afford to live a life as a Christian without knowing this absolute truth for our lives. Continue to minister to us. We need you. In Jesus' most blessed name we pray. Amen. Dear people of God, it's a joy this morning to welcome you all in the blessed name of our Savior Jesus Christ. We know that few of you might have joined this worship service for the first time on behalf of the pastoral team and all the congregation members. We welcome you on this online worship service. Wherever you are, we would like to know you. Please feel free to call the pastoral team, any one of the pastors, so that we may know you and may be encouraged by your words. You can also give your feedbacks to the pastor about the online service. As we continue to worship the Lord, we shall also pray for those who are celebrating your birthdays and wedding anniversaries. We would like to pray for you. So wherever you are, you can kneel down or even you can stand so that we can pray for you this morning. Loving Heavenly Father, our glorious God, the God who resides in heaven, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through your word. Continue to minister to us through the power of the Holy Spirit so that, Lord, we may all be in the will that you have set for us so that not one of us may perish in this world. Lord, we especially remember those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Thanks for this blessed people. 
Thanks for these families, the individuals who have been a blessing to KMC. Lord, as they have been with us for the past many years, we thank you for all the blessings upon their lives. They have been a blessing to us this morning. We all join together as one family to wish them and bless them in your name. We pray that your blessings may be upon them in this new year. Let the fellowship with you may grow in their life. Let the word may come in their lives so that they may become closer to you through the word. Lord, we pray that you answer all their prayers. If they have any burdens, Lord, we pray that you replace that burdens with the peace and strength in their lives. Bless their families. Bless the work of their hands. Give them peace which surpasses all understanding and all good health. We specially commit them into thy hands. We pray this prayer in the blessed name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear people of God, it's a joy to inform you that there will be the Sunday school after the worship service at 11.30. If you feel anything to be shared, you are welcome to share it with the teachers or the Sunday school superintendent or the pastoral team. And we would like to know the feedback also of how your children are feeling about the Sunday school and if there needs to be any changes made, we will always be open for your suggestions. Please feel free to contact us. And with regard to the offerings and tithes, we would like to make uh, one announcement. Since most of us in the KMC family are elders, some of you may feel difficult to scan the code and offer your offerings online. For that, we would like to help you out. If you can contact us over the phone, we will help you out in collecting your offering, maybe from your homes or from your workplaces so that we can, uh, we can raise a receipt on that. So please feel free to contact the pastoral team or the office and we will help you out to offer your offerings and tithes. Let us conclude the worship service as we sing this hymn, When We Walk With The Lord. Hymnal 223, When We Walk With The Lord. After this, I request the pastor, the senior pastor to pray and also lead us in benediction. Or we'll walk by his 
God, we thank you and praise you, Master, for this blessed opportunity which you have given to each one of us to join this virtual worship service this morning. Lord, thank you for enabling us to sing praises unto you, pray at your presence, and also reflect upon your word, O oh Master. Thank you, Lord, for enriching us and enlightening us through your living word, through your servant, O oh Master. Continue to we help us to be connected to you and to magnify your most holy name, following your footsteps, lifting your name on high, O oh Master. Lord, at this time we humbly submit and surrender ourselves as we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice unto you. And also, Lord, as we offer the tithes and offering at your presence and set apart these tithes for your glory and for the expansion of your kingdom, O oh Master. Lord, we acknowledge your Lordship over li our lives. Whatever we have, everything belongs to you, O oh Master. Lord, enable and empower us to continue to look on to you, to receive the blessings in an abundant way, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, accept this offering and use it for your glory and for the expansion of your kingdom, O oh Master. We thank you, we praise you. Lord, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now with the grace, peace, mercy of the Triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and prayer more. Amen. Yeah. 